push. Almost there. There we go, Gil. So with the head out, with the front legs. Go on, Gil. See the shoulders, which is a very wide part. Sorry, Gil. There we go. Good work. Good work. Chris is back at his old stomping ground in Stroud, northwest of Sydney. His mission today, to look after any animal emergencies at the local show. Okay, I'll get there as soon as I can. Thanks, Juliet. Okay, bye. But there's a sudden change to those plans. I just had a call from a farm really close to here. Ironically, it's the dairy farm I did my prac work at. It's unbelievable. It's the Clarks. They're a lovely, lovely old couple. And they've got Guernseys and, and Frisians. And apparently one of them is having severe trouble getting a calf out. So get in there as soon as we can. I've seen one foot, yep. not the other. Okay. There should yep. be soap on top of the fence there. The calf is stuck and the situation is becoming critical. First of all, I feel for the legs and one leg's oh, bad, good. two legs is great. Yeah, one foot. I've got a head there as well. I just want to be able to feel both legs and make sure the calf's actually facing the right way. You can see she is pushing, which is good. She's not making, making much progress at the moment. Dairy farmer Juliet has been on the land all her life and has seen hundreds of calves born. You get some stillbirths, chiefly from big calves, but sometimes difficult positions. So how long has she been in labour for? An hour. The longer the labour, the greater the risk to both mother and calf. How many calves has she had? She's seven years old, so a few. Yeah. Yes. She's getting some good contractions there. OK, so you can see the feet are starting to appear here. That bit of water's breaking. Yeah. Let's grab one of those ropes there. OK. It's like trying to tie your shoelaces in the dark while someone tries to push you off your, off your feet. It's difficult because everything's pushing in and moving your hands away from where they should be. And, it's a challenge. Give it a bit of a, a bit of a pull. There we go. And you can see it's, it's a fairly big calf. It explains why she's having trouble with it. There we go. There we go. Good push. Almost there. There we go, Gil. So with the head out, with the front legs. Go on, Gil. See the shoulders, which is a very wide part. Sorry, girl. There we go. Good work. Good work. Okay. Just got to clean out the mouth. The calf's alive. It's important just to get in there and get all the mucus out of the mouth. Hello, welcome. Welcome to the world. Just get up there and give it. Try and drain some of the fluid out. We're nice and alive. It's it's almost good to it sounds cruel, but even annoy them. Just trying to get in their throat and get up their nostrils. Just really stimulates them to breathe and open up their lungs. Hey, look at you, all slicked up. Yeah, little heifer, little girl. This is an important bonding moment for the two of them, but she's trying to get the calf nice and dry so it doesn't get too cold. And, and just these little grunts, she's giving them, just saying to the calf, look, I'm your mum, welcome. We've had nine months together, but this is the first time I've actually seen each other. So, um, you know, it's a very special time for her. This little one's all a bit confused about what's going on, aren't you? Yeah, you're beautiful. You're ready to face the world, aren't you? But no matter how, how many times you do this, it's always, it's always pretty special. Her name's Ivan Hosing. She's got her father's name and her mother's name. Oh, nice. What your name, too? Oh, yeah. You're efficient, aren't you? 
After just a few minutes, it's back to the milking shed for Mum. It's a tough moment, Mum leaving the calf after she's had her inside her for nine months and then, you know, it's over like that, but it's, it's farm life, you know, it's, it's, it's very real. He can't get me any more dirty, so let's go. Oh, it's like a big black Labrador, <laughs> only slightly different. Chris has just helped deliver a beautiful female calf. Juliet will never say it, but she'd be absolutely thrilled it's a girl. Uh, males around here, unfortunately, they're just no, of no use whatsoever. It's the females that produce the milk. This is a dairy farm. They rely on the milk to make the money. So females are all the go. You don't get much milk out of a male. Come meet your new friends. Now what? They've been through exactly what you've been through. Oh, gonna use these? After a warm welcome to the nursery, it's time for Ivan Ho Zing to try out her shaky legs. You're good, you're good. It's that little right one. Hey. Well done. You made it. You made it, girl. In Richmond, four-year-old French bulldog Winston is coming in with his owner, Cara. Hi, Cara. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi. Oh. Hi Winston. <laughs> Hello, Hi. champ. Winston is a popular visitor to the clinic. Oh, there he is. Especially with receptionist Kirsty. How's he doing? So he's got a bit of an embarrassing problem. Oh, oh. oh dear. You might want to have a look at it. It's, uh, it's not very nice. Oh. oh. You're not looking very embarrassed, are you? No. Perfectly looking fine. Looking gorgeous as always. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, if you've got an embarrassing problem, we should probably go in private and talk about it, shouldn't we? <laughs> Come on, then. All right, you got him, Cara? Yep. That's it. Good boy. He's kind of everything, really. He makes us laugh every day, and he's very popular, and he's very sociable and quite outgoing. Um, and, yeah, I love him to death. So, first things first, young man, embarrassing issue. I'm guessing it's the back end somewhere? No, actually. If you get a bit closer to his face, I think you'll probably um, smell the problem. Oof. Oh, my boy. Oh, someone needs to brush his teeth. That is horrific. How long has that been going on for a shocking breath? Uh, it's been going on a few weeks now, and um, I've noticed some lumps in his mouth that's getting worse. So okay. I just thought it would be good to have you to have a look at it. Yeah, OK. Can I have a little look in your mouth, my boy? Whoa! Whoa! Oh, my God, that is horrific, isn't it? Wow, it's like his whole mouth has been taken over by barnacles. Yeah, because he's got the uh, bulldog chops, until we pulled them back and had a look, we just didn't realise. And they're even on this side too. Look at that. Oh, my God. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Body. When the vet says, wow, it must be pretty bad. <laughs> so basically what this is, is it's the papillomavirus, so right. the wart virus that uh, people have. Yep. Dogs can get it as well. And generally, it's only one or two, you know, yeah. you might get maybe five. Yeah. And after a few weeks, it generally regresses, they fall off and it goes away. How long yeah. has this been going on for? About six weeks. Oh, buddy. And he's such a tough little dog, this guy, so he wouldn't give much away, but when you open his mouth, I mean, that is so unbelievable because one of those is actually just going right between his molars, which would just be so uncomfortable. It's not that unusual for young dogs to have warts develop and they come and then they go. But this case is extreme and incredibly unique. For a dog to have that many warts present in his mouth, it's nothing I've seen in the last 20 years. We are going to have to perform a procedure on you, my friend, to try and debulk, try and remove some of them and then use some medications to dampen down the continued regrowth yeah. of more. Yeah. I think the best thing for us to do is to have him in today, yep. give him an anaesthetic, okay. and then remove, harvest, if you will, <laughs> these barnacles out of his mouth yeah. and start giving him the comfort that he deserves. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you very much. All right, then. Well, do you want to say goodbye to Mummy? I probably wouldn't give her a kiss, though, because with that <laughs> breath, she won't thank you for it. See you later. Okay, okay. then, Carol. We'll give you a call once he's woken up. Thanks very much. All Thanks, right. Scott. Cheers. Bye-bye. It's never nice. You never want your dogs to go under general anaesthetic, um, especially the bulldogs who can have problems with their breathing as it is. And I'm hoping that he's going to be all right. He's in good hands. 
and I'd be devastated if anything happened to it. So now we're going to sort them out. Yes. And here's a special bit of equipment. Yes, we are. Are you ready for this? Go on, then. Wow. OK. I've just never seen anything like it. No, I mean, I've seen one or two. Yeah, but that's, that's like a colony. Nathan's an experienced nurse, has seen a lot, and together we've worked on many cases, but we're both quite shocked by how severe Winston's wart problem is. I am going to be removing these warts by using electrocautery, so basically a pen that cuts and then coagulates the blood at the same time. So hopefully going to be removing these warts like a hot knife through butter, but it's going to take a while. As well as making Winston much more comfortable, the surgery will also help kickstart his immune system to fight off the wart virus. It's actually horrible, isn't it? Gross. Poor boy. You just imagine, like, how many of those are in between the top and the bottom teeth. So mm. every time he chewed, he would have been biting on his own face. What a brave soldier he's been. The warts are coming away easily. But there are so many of them, it's going to be a slow process. It's slowly getting there, but it's just it's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Let's just make sure we've completely cleared out the side. So can you put pressure on that? So you need to use your fingers to push it down halfway. Scott is shocked at how far the horrible growths have spread. Some warts have gone so far down his throat, they're actually hanging into his airway. They're present in his soft palate, which is at the back of your mouth. And these warts are then going right into his larynx as a voice box. Nasty. Done. Well, I'm really happy with that. It looks horrible now, but it will look a lot better soon. It's been a really long procedure way longer than I thought because of just how many there were and how extensively they had spread. So he'll take a little while to recover, but actually I think he's going to feel a hell of a lot better than when he first went under, so it's a good result. Winston will be started on medication to make sure the warts don't grow back. I know. I know. Oh, poor boy. Oh. For now, it's time to sleep off the anaesthetic. All right, I'll go and call your mummy. Good boy. I'm really looking forward to seeing him, actually. Hopefully he's not going to get too excited. I don't know how sleepy he's going to be, but it'll be lovely to see him, and he's normally super excited, even when I've been away for five minutes, so <laughs> I'm sure he thinks I've left him forever. Hello! Hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> so what's the first thing you notice? The smell's gone. Exactly. That's for sure. My no God. No smell. Woke up with lovely fresh breath, didn't you? <laughs> He'll be a lot more comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. Look, let me pass him to you. Yeah. Let me show you some of my handiwork. So they were absolutely surrounding, smothering the insides of his cheeks. They're under his tongue. They're on his hard palate and then also on his soft palate. You mm. can see the difference. Oh, my God. Gone. It's so much better. Oh, good so there boy. You can see a little bit of healing to do, of course. It was a thoroughly disgusting process, but I'm really glad all those warts have gone and he should make a full recovery and feel a lot more comfortable. Do you want to see them? Definitely. I yeah. definitely want to see them. They're totally disgusting. Oh, my God. It looks like something from the bottom of the ocean. It really does. So I was oh, thinking that horrific. looks like barnacles, doesn't it? And all that in his tiny little mouth. Yeah. Absolutely shocked by how many were in his mouth. We knew there was quite a lot, but I'm pleased they're now in a dish and not in his mouth anymore. All right, buddy. You sleep it off, eh? Better out than in? Yeah. All right, good boy. All right, Cara, all the best. Thanks ever so much. See you later. Thank you. Take bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye Kirsty. Good boy, come here. Rascal. Me? Yeah. You rascal? A young border collie has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash. Rocket ate a loaf of bread that I was making, and it, nearly an entire loaf. There was all about one bun's worth less. What about this big? 
and uh, we've noticed he's been expanding ever since and looks like he's about to give birth to a litter of buns. Katie and her children are worried about the greedy pup's behaviour. Rocket has been known to eat quite a few things that he's not supposed to. So far he's eaten the arm out of a chair, he's eaten underpants, bras, t-shirts, socks, several pairs of shoes. So he's got good taste, but uh, a bit naughty. <laughs> Hello. Got four. This Four is... children here. Which one's Rocket? The big fat one, Hi, full Rocket. of dough. My sweetheart, what did you do? Come through. Thank you. When Katie first arrives, she thinks Rocket has been up to his old tricks again, eating something he shouldn't have. And as soon as I look at Rocket, the first thing I see is that his abdomen is really, really big. He's pulled down a tray of dough, okay. and it was quite a large amount. Um, I'd made two breadsticks. OK. The biggest concern is that when they have eaten dough and that yeast rises, that yeast can form alcohol. OK. And then he can actually get alcohol poisoning from it oh, as wow. that alcohol gets absorbed into his bloodstream. So it's a really, really serious problem. It can be fatal. Katie's face literally drops when I tell her how serious alcohol poisoning can be. Yeah, so his tummy is feeling really full and, and uncomfortable there. Yep. As time passes, Rocket's stomach is getting bigger and bigger, which means that that dough is continuing to rise as if his stomach is an oven. So the plan is I'm going to take him out into the treatment room. Yep. I'm going to give him an injection to make him vomit. OK. If he doesn't bring up the dough, then we'll have to give him an anaesthetic and pump his stomach. Yep. If we can't get it out that way, he'll have to have surgery to take, okay. have all the right. ball of dough taken yep. out of his tummy. I understand. Oh, my God, I could really lose my dog. and. Uh... Yeah, that's, that's not a place we want to even go. We've, we lost a dog a couple of years ago and the family's not really been the same since. Come on, Rocket. Come on, Bud. I know it's scary. Come on, Dal. All right, Sam, we're going to just give this IV. Uh, it's an injection to make him vomit. All right, buddy, it's just going to be a little sting. Eating raw bread dough is a serious emergency in a dog. That dough rises from the yeast, and as the yeast releases alcohol into the bloodstream, that dog is going to get alcohol poisoning, and that can lead to death very quickly. It's okay. It's okay. What's going on? It's now a race against time to get the fermenting dough out of the young pup's stomach. All done. Done. It was like a little bee sting. Hopefully, Rocket will respond to this injection and will vomit up the bread dough, because if he doesn't, things are going to be a lot more serious for him. I oh, know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've made you feel sick. Hey, bud. Good boy. Here you go, darling. Let's get it all out. That's the way. Come on, hun. Good boy. That's a nice big amount. Let's get it out. Out it goes. Oh, good boy. Hey? That's a nice big one. I wasn't expecting such a big vomit. Rocket hasn't stopped vomiting. There is just more bread dough pouring out of his mouth. His stomach was absolutely packed with the stuff. Good boy. Oh, there you go, sweetie. As much as I hate making dogs vomit, I kind of feel good about making Rocket vomit because he's brought up this big lump of dough and he's potentially saved his own life. So there was the one piece of bread. There. And here's the other piece of bread. And then the rest of the liquid is probably just it's starting to be digested. That is disgusting, buddy. Rocket's sitting there with a very sad and sorry look on his face. And I think he's feeling a little bit guilty too. But the exhausted pup's ordeal is not over yet. Lisa wants to run urgent blood tests and the pup will have to stay overnight at Sash. We're running some blood tests on Rocket now. We need to make sure he's not developing signs of alcohol poisoning and that he's not becoming dehydrated. We'll have to keep a really close eye on him while he's in hospital with us. I think Pippa's more worried than anyone, isn't she? She misses her big brother already, don't you? Hey? Hi. OK. How is Doughboy? All right, so... The good news is we managed to get him to vomit out quite a lot of that oh, dough. Good. So two very obvious pieces in there. OK. Because um, some of it probably has been absorbed already, we do need to keep a close eye okay. on him. So it's 
for the best if he stays in hospital tonight yep. on a drip so that we can flush any of the remaining toxin out of his system. Don't worry, Mike, it's going to be fine. Rocket is not completely out of the woods. He's still at risk of some form of alcohol poisoning, so we need to have him in hospital on a drip to make sure that he's going to be safe. All right, guys, do you want to come see Rocket? Yes, yes. please. Hey, do you want to come see your brother? Yes, yes brother please. Rocket. Let's go. It's going to be really horrible going home without Rocket. The kids are going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. So let's just hope we can pick him up tomorrow and that everything's OK. Good boy. He feels like he's lost about three kilos. Don't you? Hey? You got rid of the buns from the oven. Hey? Mm. I know. I love you too. Yes, I do. It's really not going to be easy for the family to leave Rocket here in hospital. He's only one year old, he's just a baby, and they are really going to miss him. I just hope that I can get him home to them as quickly as possible. Good boy. Okay. Bye, Rocky. We'll be back soon, OK? You be good boy. We'll be back soon. Good boy. But I hate walking away seeing him like that, with the drip about to go in and potentially not knowing what the outcome is going to be. So, yeah. We're going to think positively, kids, aren't we? Hi, buddy. How are you feeling today? Hey, huh? come on. Aren't you good? It's been 24 hours since Rocket's bread dough good? binge. Let's have a feel of your tummy, see how you're feeling. Lisa had to act fast to induce vomiting to get the fermenting dough out of the dog's stomach. He's bright, he's happy, his abdomen is no longer filled with gas. And the good news is he hasn't shown any signs of alcohol poisoning, which means that he's ready for some food and hopefully we'll be able to go home. Rocket, have a look what I've got over here, bud. Sit. Ah. I think this is wishful thinking, but sit. With Wait. bread off the menu, Rocket will have to settle for good old-fashioned yes, dog food. Good boy. Rocket has definitely turned a corner today. He's eating well, and I think he's ready to go home. Have you seen Dr Lisa yet? Rocket's welcoming committee is anxiously waiting. I think we've all missed Rocket very badly, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, he's the main fixture of the household. He's over there. Come here, buddy. What you doing? Hey, hello. Oh, I'm pleased to see you too. Oh, no, he's going to try and fight with everyone. Hello. <laughs> We're pleased to see you too, matey. You've lost a bit of weight. Hey? You lost a couple of loaves. Rocket is a completely different dog from yesterday. He's about half the size that he was. He's full of beans, he's lively. It's good to see him back to his usual naughty self. Thank you so much. No problem. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll have to keep these ones away from Rocket, I think. Yes. <laughs> knowing his, knowing his behaviours. <laughs> given what happened. You know what? I'm just going to pass on bread for a while. When Katie brought Rocket in, I don't think she realised quite how deadly eating dough could be. But he's responded well to the treatment, and luckily he's going home back to his normal self. And hopefully, from now on, she'll be keeping that bread dough well out of reach. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very you. much. <laughs> He's going to push you. See you later. Thank Bye. you. Come on. All right. It's day two of Scott's working holiday in the Welsh farming community of St Clair's where he's exploring the idea of one day becoming a country vet. Right. Ready to crack on? Yeah, absolutely. Today, he's up early, helping out head farm vet David at a local dairy farm. David obviously is the lead vet here. He's the man that knows what he's doing, and I'm the humble pupil. Yeah, I've got one for you as well, Scott. We'll get the okay. scanner out for you now on the front bit. Just Scott and David are using mobile ultrasound equipment to check which dairy cows are pregnant. It's uh, a very interesting kit. It looks straight out of Star Trek. Kit. It's basically just an ultrasound. The same thing that we would use in our clinics back in Richmond, but this is designed for internal use. And I'm not very much looking forward to where I'm going to have to put it. <laughs> have you got an image? Oh, wow, yeah. 
cool. Yeah, Good. so that's the ultrasound scan image I can see right in front that's of me. That's right, yes. OK, All right. let's go. I'm actually feeling surprisingly nervous, way more nervous than I ever expected that I would. I'm an experienced vet, but not experienced when it comes to large animals. So I feel like I'm almost going back to school. Morning, girls. How are you doing? I just hope I'm up to the challenge. All right, so here's the first lot of patients for the day. Here you go. Good girl. Waiting patiently in line are 40 cows ready for testing. Hello, ladies. I promise to be gentle. <laughs> it's really important that every cow on the farm gets pregnant every year. If they produce a calf, then afterwards they can produce milk. It's just like when you're a mum, you only produce breast milk once you've had a baby, and the same applies in cows. I'm just going to uh, scan the first few cows. Yep. And if you just watch to see what I'm doing, and then later on, I'll, you can have a turn, have a go, right? All right. So we're going to use the scanner to see if they're in calf. Get the probe in it. Most of the time, these girls have a lovely time eating grass in the beautiful Welsh fields. And the farmers, of course, keep very close tabs on them. But every now and again, they do have to get them in and do medical procedures on them. It has to be done, but hopefully it will be as gentle and as kind as possible. Good again. Can mark with chalk. Give Mark a blue when she's in calf. So you know, all pregnant, all the blue cows are, are in calf. I've got a nice blue tail. That's right. Nice right. blue mark on the back. Okay, next. So you've got to watch them because they will, they will barge on. Yeah. I'm like a cow bouncer. That's right. <laughs> You're doing a great job there. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> now it's Scott's turn. I know that Scott will find a, a challenge. And just putting his arm into the cow, just a whole, it's a whole foreign environment. And I think he's really got his work cut out today. I, I've scanned and I've checked her. So we'll now give you a go and see what you can find in the cow. OK, so you all ready? You yes. Set? <laughs> is, is the scanner turned on? Uh, it's definitely on, so at least the oh, equipment's right. right. I can't okay, blame good. the equipment. OK, good. Let's see, let's see how okay. you go. It's been such a long time that I've worked with cows, and so I really want to make sure that I don't embarrass myself too much. I'm totally put off by the sound effect she's given me. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Come on, get on with it, and we'll see, how, see, how, see what you find. OK, I'm going in. So, oh, man. That's an experience I haven't had in 17 years. That is... Oh, man! I'll be quite happy if Scott can just find the womb initially. Is it in the top left-hand corner of the screen? Would it be there? If he finds a pregnancy, I'll be really pleased. What can I see in here? OK. I'm trying to find her uterus. Just scan left and right. Move the probe over the womb, just left and right. It's absolutely amazing to be able to use an ultrasound like this in the field. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? I can tell from Scott's expression how he's getting on. And initially, I can see he's really concentrating. He's focusing on what he's doing. And then eventually, you can see his eyes light up. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. And you think, whoa, that's, that's, that's the eureka moment. He's seen something wonderful, great, fantastic. OK, teacher, um, please tell me. I'm, I'm pretty sure this girl's in calf. Yes, she is in calf. Well done, Scott. Oh, <laughs> thank God. She's in calf, she can go. And then, of course, you have to move on to the next cow, and the next, and the next, and you have to do it all over again. But so far, he's doing great. <laughs> we'll, make a, we'll make a farm bet of you yet, Scott. <laughs> Welcome to Wales. Oh, <laughs> great. This is an incredible experience. It's so out of my comfort zone, uh, but also really exciting and, uh, and interesting and different. I've just got poo on my lens. I've had a, a poo accident. <laughs> That's nasty. And now I'm covered in poo. How can I wipe that off? David, I just need a nurse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you bring nurses? No, no nurse. You no are, nurse. You are the nurse. You, you're the vet and the nurse. Excuse me. Hi. 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 Um, I've got Lulu to see Dr Chris, please. OK, yeah. no problem. We'll get Lulu on the scales there, please. Yep, sure. Lulu, Kim has arrived at the Bondi Clinic, desperate for help for her two-year-old Labradoodle, Lulu. She's having these dreadful sneezing attacks um, three or four times a day. When I take her for walks, you know, she tires out easily and is quite lethargic. So it's definitely not normal for a young pup. Are you a good girl? Yeah. Why aren't 
you. Hello. How are you going? Hello, hello. How are you? How are you? I'm Chris. Uh, Kim. Nice to meet you, Kim. And this, this is Lulu. Lulu. All right, come on through. All right, darling. It's all right. I've been told that Kim and Lulu are in here because Lulu has been experiencing a lot of sneezing. Come on. Hello, Dr. Chris. Here we now, go. Now, normally sneezing isn't a reason to rush into the vet, so there must be something very different about this case. She has these um, sneezing fits about three or four times a day where she'll sneeze for about 15, 20 times and um, nasal secretions goes flying everywhere. Yeah. I've got to give Kim some credit here because a lot of people just look at that and see a dog sneezing and think, oh, there's just something in the air that stirred her up. But it seems to me to be something more serious. And it's only um, from this nostril. I mean, you can see there's a bit of gunk there now. And it is almost like she's trying to get something out? Or yes, is it... you think something's stuck there. Mm. Good girl. So a nice grey, pinky colour in there, which is normal. We go across to the other side. It looks a little bit more raw. We've also got that whitey discharge coming out of that nostril. The real challenge for me now is trying to work out what is actually happening inside that left nostril that is causing these sneezing fits that are apparently something to behold. Oh, here we go. Oh, look, look at this. Yep, yep. Wow. Yeah. That was... Extraordinary. That isn't just a normal sneeze. That is a full-on experience. The one upside is it's given us a sample. It's given us a lot of samples. What I might do is actually... It's all right, darling. It's all get right. Get a bit of that. It's all right. And it's put that under the microscope and see what we can find. OK. Chris is hopeful the sample will provide vital clues as to the cause of Lulu's explosive sneezing. Now I can see the few cells that line the nostril and some pus cells, but that's really about it. So really the, the cause of all this isn't sitting on this slide. Because Lulu's sneeze sample is inconclusive, Chris decides a more thorough investigation is needed. I think the most useful thing for Lulu right now mm -hmm. would be to go and have a little camera go up inside her mouth, mm -hmm. then do a U-turn and come back down the back of her nose. Oh, okay. So, so what I'd like to do is send you up to Sash. Okay. And get them to, to perform some endoscopy on her. Right, right now, you know, she could have a little bit of grass. She could have a solid colony of, of fungus that's growing in there and irritating her nose. Mm. Or the other, other possibility, which, you know, I, I have to mention, um, is something that isn't so nice, which is something like, like a tumour. I can see Kim's whole demeanour change the moment I mention the fact it could be a tumour. But you have to flag these things. I hope, like hell, it's not. If Lulu did have something that was slow growing and just occasionally pressing on the inside of her nose, you would see sneezing like this. All right, thanks, Kim. Okay, thank Good you. Luck. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Labradoodle Lulu is making a dramatic entrance. All right, darling, all right. For emergency vet Dr. Dave Collins, it's a noisy demonstration of the two-year-old symptoms. Okay. Shared it with us. Yeah. That's what she's been doing. You know, she sneezes and almost convulses 20 times. Chris is hopeful further tests at Sash will provide an answer to Lulu's chronic sneezing. Now this way first. This way. So we're going to put her through the CT machine and that'll give us a good look at her whole nose, the internal structures from the frontal sinuses to the, the rest of the nasal cavities. Mama's going to stay, OK? Be a good girl. All right. All right, we'll look after her. Thank you. OK. Go on, Lulu. Good girl. Thanks. I know she's in really good hands here and, and Dave's going to do everything he can to, you know, make her right and... 
hopefully uh, it'll be a good result. Good girl. Owner Kim is facing the possibility that her precious girl could have a tumour. I wish I was there being able to hold a paw for her. The right hand side is full of air, which is normal, but this left is, is completely abnormal and must be giving her a hell of a headache. I'm a bit worried there's a bit of, bit of tissue build up in the back of those sinuses. Um, so we probably need to, to have a look up there to see if there's a tumour. To test for any abnormal growths, iodine contrast dye is being injected into Lulu's veins. As we go to the next study with the contrast, it should tell us whether this tissue is, is just mucus and discharge or whether there's actually a tumour up there. It's a really abnormal nose. Owner Kim is terrified that Lulu's sneezing could be due to a tumour. A bit nervous and anxious. Yeah, I hope they'll be able to sort it out today. There's a lot of discharge. Must be giving her a hell of a headache. All right. Well, we've found that the fine bony structure of the nose is, is, is in really good shape. And if there was a tumour or even a really nasty fungus, they'd be destroyed. So I'm, I'm really pleased that cancer's pretty much off the list. But it's not good news just yet. Dave's now going to insert a small camera into Lulu's nose to search for more clues. Let's have a look. We'll get that in the back. So the endoscope enables us to have a look behind the back of the soft palate. Uh, we're just looking for any kind of foreign body or infection or fungal problems. Yes. Nothing up there that shouldn't be up there. With still no firm answers, Dave now needs to take a tissue sample. Grab. Good little sample, Linda. Once we get the biopsy results, we should know exactly the best way to treat her and, and stop that snot and those sneezing fits, which must be just horrible for her. Hi, Kim, how are you? Hi, hello. Good news, everything looks pretty good. So I don't think there's a tumour in there. Oh, thank So you. there's a lot of snot in there, so Lulu's gonna have a bit of a headache. All right, Lulu, it's time to go home, darling. How's your nose feeling? Is it all right? Good girl, let's go home. Wanna go see Mum? Come on. Where's your mum? Where's your mum? <gasps> Lulu! Hello, darling. Hello. Hello, baby girl. It's a happy reunion, but the cause of Lulu sneezing still isn't clear. So now an anxious Kim will have to wait for the biopsy results. Darling, let's go home. To walk into Sneeze Central. Chris is making an important home visit to see sneezing Labradoodle Lulu. Hello. <gasps> Hello. How are you? Oh, I've been waiting to see you. It's good to see you and good to see you, <laughs> Lulu. It's hard to forget what happened last time I saw Lulu. Look at my dress. Wow. Yeah. I think that local dry cleaners got years of business out of that one episode, but on a serious side, it really showed just how much this was affecting her. How's Lulu? Um, look, not much better, although, you know, she looks fine today. But, but she still um, has the occasional yeah. sneezing fit. Today, Chris is delivering the sash biopsy results and hopefully a solution for Lulu. Do you want the full works burger of a veterinary term? Yep, sure yeah. do. Lymphocytic plasmacytic rhinitis. I thought that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, I knew you had money on that. <laughs> yeah. no, essentially what it is is her nose is becoming irritated and instead of just handling that in the normal way, her body is freaking out and sending in all these cells into her nose, which is making her nose irritated even more inflamed, and so instead of just a simple sneeze when it becomes irritated, she has those full sneezing fits. Mm. Oh, OK. Lulu can now start on medication to control her sneezing fits. Open, Lulu. 
Good girl. How about that? I'm feeling very relieved that it's, you know, it's nothing more serious and it can be treated with, um, with these two types of medication. All right, so All right. we'll talk soon. OK. And we'll hopefully it'll be the last of the sneezing. Yeah, yes. It'll take a couple of weeks for these medications to truly work their magic, but hopefully the next time I see Lulu, it'll all be quiet on the sneezing front. Really? Over there, over you go. Yeah, yeah. Get it, get it, get it. So, Kim, I'm seeing stripes which hide stains and red which shows every single stain. So which way is it? Are we better or are we not? For Labradoodle Lulu, it's been a month since she started medication to control her sneezing. It's been miraculous. Great. Those, so the medications work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, within well, within two days, she had cut down to like half of the sneezes. Yeah. And within four days, they were gone completely. Wow. I mean, oh, it's just you know, like such a relief to me, you know. So I guess it was just a matter of her own nose realizing it didn't need to react the way it was. Mm. So I'm relieved for you, but of course yeah. I'm. Even more relief for Lulu, who yeah. doesn't have to go through that ordeal, that experience. Yes. Yeah. So it's all been worth it. We're all happy, yes. Yeah. Oh, she's worth it. You feeling better? Hmm? What do you think? Happy? Mm. Wow. At least it's not snotty. <laughs> Hendrix here to see Dr. Kate. No worries, take a seat, she won't be long. Cool, thank you. At the Bondi Vet Hospital, Emily and Dave have just arrived with their adorable 11 month old Grudel Hendrix. Oh, he's very sweet, aren't you, Hendrix? But while he couldn't look cuter, Hendrix has a rather embarrassing problem. So, Hendrix has had a really itchy, horrible ear for a while now. It's probably been a month, I reckon. Yeah, Lots of rolling on the floor and kind of bashing his head against the floorboards. Yeah. Um, and it stinks. Yeah. It really stinks. Mm, like, Jesus. Veggie bite. Oh, see? Oh, like, Look, there's a scratching. Oh, yeah. Last night, I could hear him. Woke up in the middle of the night and I could just hear his constant, like, scratching of his ear. So he's obviously being up through the night, I think. It's keeping him up now. So that's why we've come in today. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi, Hi Andy. How are you? How are you? Are you good? As soon as you walk out into that waiting room, Hendrix is itching his ears. They are so itchy. In we go. Let's get these ears sorted out. Come on, buddy. So he's got bad ears. Yeah, this has been a while as well. I mm -hmm. think it's got worse. Okay. So it's this it's quite smelly for a start mm -hmm. and then the itching's just got quite intense um and even though like we've been cleaning his ears so i think it hides the smell a bit but yeah. it, he's rolling around kind okay. of bashing his head on the floor yeah come on oh. little buddy oh. Oh. what is he 17 kilos 17 yeah. kilos no. so good. good boy now guys you tell me that he's quite a swimmer yes he loves to swim okay obsessed with water um ocean giant puddles, giant muddy puddles, which as you can imagine, mm -hmm. is a bit of maintenance. He's got beautiful teeth. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Beautiful long eyelashes. Yeah, I'm, I think <gasps> we might need... <gasps> Holy moly. They're very infected. Are they? Yes. As soon as I lift those ears up, it stinks. Oosh. Stinky. <laughs> very, very stinky ears. Yeah. It's not very good, is it? It's kind of like this sweet raisin smell. I don't even know, but you know, these guys described it really well when they said it smells like Vegemite. I always encourage people to get used to what normal ears smell like. This is not normal. Mm. This is not definitely not normal ear smell. Is it handy? It's just a bit of a surprise, I think. Um, yeah, it's just. It has been smelly a while, so it's good to understand what it could be, but didn't think it was going to be a serious ear infection. We just thought maybe we haven't been putting his ear drops in properly. So just really glad that he's going to get it sorted today because I think he's been a bit uncomfortable by the sounds of it. Bless him. So all of this here should be probably not as white as he usually is, 
but this here shouldn't be this dark. So see this brown colour? Been like that for quite a while too. Well, no, I, I know, like, so Emily and Dave think the ears are supposed to be this colour. And they are definitely not. They are supposed to be white like the dog. So they've never possibly seen him with normal ears, which is kind of concerning. So the reason that the drops are not doing anything is because you probably got like a water-based drop um, mm. and a cleaner is not gonna fix an infected ear. Oh, handy. Oh, drinks. This would be so uncomfortable. And the only thing that I can think of is if you have some kind of intense itch, like an itch at the bottom of your foot and you had to put it into a shoe and not itch it like the whole day. Like, that's what it would feel like. It would be so, so itchy. If I do this to Hendy, yeah. he'll be like, ah, oh, that is so good. Yeah, yeah. he loves right? that. Because it's so itchy. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little sample of these ears and I'm going to have a look at it under a microscope. Yep. And then what we're going to do, we're going to actually put something down there that will work. Okay, great. Okay. We could be dealing with multiple things. We could be dealing with certain types of bacteria. We could be dealing with certain types of fungal infections. And what we need to do, we need to establish what this is so I can then decide what I'm going to use to treat this particular ear infection. Ooh, so Ooh. itchy, Handy. We're going to take these little things and we're going to go stain them. I know it smells like your ears, doesn't it? It smells like your gross ears. Oh. Stinks. It's scary, but yeah, I guess just hoping that it's nothing too serious. So we're going to stain these and this allows us to actually get some colour on whatever's going down in those ears. Let's have a look at this right ear. Yep, so fungal infection. There's quite a lot of fungus, otherwise known as yeast. Fungal infections, they love moist areas. And so anywhere that's wet, like Handy's ears, is a great place for them to grow. And what's happening, not only is he swimming, but he's also having this cleaner that's put down there. And it's just making his ears wetter and wetter and wetter. So it's progressively just getting worse and worse and worse. So we need to stop this in its tracks. Primarily what we've got is what they call a malassezia infection. So it's otherwise known as yeast. Right? So, yes, yeah, that's the smell. Right. Yes. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this down to having excessive moisture down there. Okay. Right? And what we're going to do is we're going to clean up the yeast. We're going to clean up the bacteria. We're going to put him on an antifungal and an antibiotic. Yep. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you guys to start using some prevention once a week. Okay. Nice and still, buddy. Nice and still. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out all of those clumps of fur that are growing down Hendrix's ears and then we're going to give them a good clean. Good See all this gross hair? It's all going. Good See you later gross hair. When it all grows back it's all going to be beautiful. Beautiful white fur the way it's supposed to be. Good boy. He's such a good boy. I think the most important part of this is getting owners to recognise early when there is a problem. Ooh. Okay, there's a good, that's what's coming that's out. Sure. Rather than letting it get to a point where it's a total mess, having it so that they can actually smell these ears and be like, that is not normal veggie my ears, let's go to the vet. This is your drops, right? These are antibiotics as well as an antifungal. It's just a gentle good boy. resting, good boy. so resting like so. Right, you don't have to push it all the way down. Yep. And you need to do a really nice good squeeze Ooh, down there. Okay? Good boy. And then a, yeah. But nice. Treat. Soon you won't have veggie mite ears, Hendrix. Yeah, mm. good boy. Are you okay there? <laughs> Shake his oh. <laughs> We've kind of felt it that he's not been quite himself, so I think it'll be good over the next few days just to see him feeling a bit better. Okay, like a nice head massage. Oh, so good. So good. You said he can't be swimming for 14 days. Well. Honestly, I wish he wouldn't swim for two weeks while I'm trying to use the antibiotics and the antifungals down these ears. And I think probably most vets would say swimming is out. But it's summer and it's Bondi. You know, I can't stop the swimming. Come on then. Good boy. Whoa. See you guys. Bye, thank you so much. Thank Good you. Good luck. Call me if you need anything. Will do. Bye, Handy. You. Don't shake your head. Good boy. He'll be feeling heaps better. By tomorrow morning, he'll be a new dog.
Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Busek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video.